and girls, people of all ages, the San Francisco 49ers have a problem. The San Francisco 49ers have a injury problem. It started with CMC, then it went over to the backup running back, and now their third string quarterback in Mason went down last night with the parent AC joint as well. When it rains, it pours in the NFL kingdom, in the running back room especially. We saw last, or we saw the last couple seasons with the Baltimore Ravens. We're seeing it this year with the San Francisco 49ers. We saw it with Carolina Panthers when CMC was there as well. So, you guys, I got to ask the question. When one injury happens, when one injury happens, let's say J.K. Dobbins goes down, and then Gus the Bus goes goes down, and then Mitchell goes down, and then the next person goes down, and then the next person goes down, all in the same position. Are they practicing too hard? Are they practicing too hard when all these injuries happen in one said position room? Or are they not practicing hard enough when all positions go down in one room? The point of the matter is that the San Francisco 49ers guys right now are in a world of hurt. They may have found their mojo last night. They may have finally bounced back and won some dollar dollar bills and won some games. But you're down to your fifth string quarterback now. Or fifth string we're running back now. Fifth, fourth string, fifth string running back, it doesn't matter. It's no CMC, it's no Mason, it's it is no Mitchell, it's no whoever. So we gotta ask the question, guys. Is something in the water in San Francisco? Or do they just not or do or do they just not want to play anymore? Is there something in the water in San Francisco? Or injuries actually do just spring up. Is there something in the water? Or maybe they're just tired of Kyle Shanahan. I don't know, guys. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Injuries, injuries, injuries everywhere in the NFL, especially in the San Francisco 49ers locker room. But sit back and buckle up for the best damn NFL show on the planet. Cue that intro. Are you ready for the best damn NFL show on the planet? Man Hour Nation, rise up. Yeah. Hey. Let's go. Hitting that gridiron. We're going hard. We're running the plays. You know the vibe. Only the strong survive. Got to keep your head in the game. Talking NFL. Uncut straight raw. Steady bringing that sauce. We about to take off. Get yeah. it high. Yeah. This man, I was poor talk. Yeah. Yeah. From the quarterback to the lineman. Everybody bringing heat. You don't really want to try them. Hey. Hey. Who gon' win? It's a battle of the Giants. This show is the flyest. Nobody can deny it. This is Man Hour. Man. Sport talk. Man hour. Sport talk. What team you reppin'? We keep it interesting. Who caught another down? Who got that interception? This is man hour. Sport talk. Man hour. Sport talk. What team you reppin'? We keep it interesting. Who caught another down? Who got that interception? Let's go! What is up, man? Our nation, Michael Buckeye, show with the man. I return to manhourradio.com. Check out this hoodie. Lord's got this hoodie. John's got this her hoodie. Jim's got this hoodie. Several other people, other John got this hoodie. Many people got this hoodie. Be like the media. Be the big, big like the big skin pundits. Go over to manhourradio.com and get yourself a hoodie. It is officially hoodie season. We got this thick ass fleece hoodie. Like it, it's it's like 60 degrees here out uh, in southern Indiana, and I got the thick fleece hoodie on today, and I'm sweating balls. I'm just going to be honest. I got a fan going. I It is hot. It is hot. It is hot. It is hot. But, guys, it is week six of the NFL season, and it is time to talk about contenders or pretenders. That's right. Contenders or pretenders right here on Friday edition of Man Hour NFL Talk. We are going to talk about the Washington Commanders. Are they contenders or are they pretenders? Along with the Seattle Seahawks, Chicago Bears, the New York Football Jets, and of course, the Dallas Cowboys. Contenders or pretenders? Play along in the chat below, guys. We got a great show for your lineup today. Before we get too carried away, I need to slow it down, baby. Slow it down, baby, and welcome the man... The myth, the legend, the VP of the Pigskin Pundits, Mr. John Pellis himself. He says, "What up, y'all?" I, I don't know if, like, if John's trying to be hip and like, "What's up? What's up?" But what's up, John? What's up, man? What's up? What's up? What's up? And he says, "New song, huh?" No, no, John. 
that is just Red Kingdom by Tech Nine, and I and I understand that you guys are not going to get your fill of talking down to the Kansas City Chiefs all weekend long. That the refs are going to help them, yada yada yada. So I wanted to make sure you know that the Red Kingdom is still here. So if you guys want a good song, check it out. Red Kingdom by Tech Nine. Check it out, my man, my man, my man. And John says, brain fart is coming. Prepare yourselves, y'all. Prepare yourselves for a brain fart. Oh, okay, John. Okay, okay. Slow it down, baby. Mark D's in the chat as well. He says, what up, Buck Meister? What up, what up, what up, Mark D? Hope you're having a grand old day, man. Be safe out there in beautiful Denver, Colorado. And John says, hush it about JK. He is on my fantasy team. As you guys know, John is in our man hour NFL fantasy foot football league. And as you guys know, right now, John is 0 and 5. So he needs all the help he can get. Now, John, I'm just poking the bear. I'm just poking the bear. But it is, it is what it is. Other John is in the chat as well. He is a pigskin pundit as well. We have two Johns as pigskin pundits, and John is the newest pigskin pundit. He says, What up, ball? What up, Buck? And the rest of the Buckamaniacs. I like that. The Buckamaniacs. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up, John? Hope you're having a grand old day. Uh, John, uh, I, b- I believe you just moved, got settled into the new house up in there, up in there in Canada. Hope, man, I miss Canada. I was up in Canada for six years, five years, five and a half years, whatever. Had a grand time. Had a grand old time. I miss me some Canada. Canada, Canada, Canada. James Chambers in the chat says, I offer, I offer, I often wonder if it's the equipment issue with the cleats when players on the same team get injured, especially in the knees. James, let me speak from experience here. Earlier this season, I had uh, younger kids, uh, freshmen, seventh graders, right? Both of those age groups suffered a lot of wrist injuries our first week of practice. I actually had six broken wrists, th- four of them which were season-ending wrist injuries because they're on the growth on the growth plate. They couldn't wrap up and play for some reason, but whatever, I digress from, from that. But I feel like sometimes it just it just falls in bunches, right? It just like it like it just sucks. And just sometimes you just cannot catch a break. And two years previous from that, I had three ACL tears in one game. Not in one season, not in one month, in one game, I had three ACL tears, all to three starters. And it was just, I mean, it just, shit just happens sometimes. But, you know, it could be an equipment issue. It could be the cleats. It it could be the surfaces, right? Because, like, when the like when my high school kids tore their ACLs, we, we were playing on a shitty-ass field. It, it was, let, let's just be honest. It was a it was a bad bad field, but sometimes just you just got bad luck. Got bad luck. Ryan's in the chat as well. He says, "Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go." Ryan is a, is a Denver Broncos fan. They got a big game versus the Chargers this week, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, guys, if you are interested in winning a hoodie like Laura and like John and Jim, there's a link in the description below. There is a pin link with the week six NFL pick. We're giving away an, another hoodie this week for the weekly prize. And of course, a grand prize of $2,000. So if you want to be like Laura, Jim, and John, click on the link below, guys. Pay that $1 entry fee. $1. That, that, that is always $1 entry fee to get yourself some picks and a chance to win some da 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 bills and a hoodie. And a hoodie. And, a, and I get a hoodie. Paul Aker says Dallas are pretenders. We'll be talking about the Cowboys coming up here very, very soon, Paul. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for that. Got my man, Matt Henry, in the chat. Says, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon to you, Wellas. Matt, hope hope you're having a grand old day, man. Uh, Matt is a Chicago's Bear fan, so he's going to be getting plenty of sleep over the next day so he can wake up bright and early at 8.30 Central Standard Time to watch his Chicago Bears take on the Jacksonville Jaguars over the prawn. Ryan says, John 0-5. Hell yeah, John. Party it up, baby. <laughs> party it up. Party it up. Party up. James says, I know some players won't wear certain cleats on fields turf because they dig in and get stuck. Yes, that is true. That's actually why I, because uh, at like at our field, we just got a brand new turf field last season, and we all had those uh, twisted in molded cleats, right? I'm, I made all of my kids go get those rounded soccer cleats. So just for that exact reason. So, so, so James, you are exactly right. Exactly right. And John says, you guys smell that? It smells like teen spirit. (laughs) 
two jerks and a shake, and that's all you need. That's all you need here on this beautiful Friday edition, guys. But welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Week NFL 6 is here. Like I said, guys, the link in the description below in the pinned comment gets you to the Pickums, and you can get yourself a hoodie. And, of course, $2,000 is a grand prize, and we'll be giving away that grand prize week 19. So first week of the playoffs is when we'll be giving that away. But it is week six, and it's time to talk about contenders and pretenders. We have gone across the landscape, and I picked up five teams that I that I think that many people are hyping up. Many people are like, "Hey, these teams are real deals. This team is like is like is a like is a real deal." And out of those five teams, we're going to talk about it, and we are going to determine if they are contenders or, in fact, if they are pretenders. So the first one up is going to be the Washington Commanders. This Washington Commanders guys team has kind of really coming out of nowhere. Let's just be honest, right? Right now they are leading the NFC East. They're sitting at a four and one record so far this season. They do play the Ravens in this much watched game this this weekend. We will be streaming this game over on our Discord. So if you guys want to watch it and you're not in the Baltimore Washington area, uh, but a bing, but a boom, it will be on our Discord. But as of right now, the Washington Commanders have the fifth-ranked offense in the NFL. Jay Downs is is playing at an MVP level, playing out of his mind. Not only rookie uh, like uh, the year, but MVP level. They're averaging 31 points per per game as well. They are lighting up the scoreboard, and their defense isn't half bad either. 13th-ranked defense, only giving up 23 points per game, 328 total yards. But slow it down, baby. Slow it down, right? Slow it down. When we look at the Washington Commanders, they 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 are four and one on the season. But let's look who they've beaten. They've beaten the New York football giants. The Giants are two and three on the season. If the Giants actually would have had a kicker, they probably would have lost that game, right? The Cincinnati Bengals, one and four on the season. The Arizona Cardinals, two and three on the season. The Cleveland Browns, one and four. Where is, where is James at when you need him? His Browns are, are terrible. The only team they really didn't sneak by in this four-game winning streak is the Air, which is the Arizona Cardinals, which they did dominate on the scoreboard, but not the game. So, you guys, we have to ask a question. Are the Washington Commanders contenders or pretenders? Guys, I think the Washington Commanders are pretenders. I think they are pretenders because on the like on the games that they they have played, yes, they are on a four game winning streak. Yes, they came out of nowhere. Yes, Jaden Daniels is playing at an MVP level, but the Bengals, the Browns, I can give you the Cardinals, and I can give you a good win versus the uh, like the Giants. Guys, the Washington Commanders are pretenders. They're going to get smacked this week by the uh, Baltimore Ravens. They are going to get smacked by Lamar Jackson and that kind of bad Baltimore Ravens defense. Let's just be honest. And then they play the Panthers and Bears and Giants again. Kind of bounce back, kind of like, oh, it's just a fluke or whatever, right? But, but then they play the Steelers, Eagles, Cowboys, Titans, Saints, Eagles to end the season. Yeah, they might get seven, eight wins, but they got an easy-ass schedule. Let's just be honest. Their schedule is easy. Easy ass schedule. Guys, the Washington Commanders are pretenders in my opinion. They lost to the Buccaneers week one, and I think that is actually who they are. Teams are going to start to catch up and know how to stop Jaden Daniels. Yes, the defense is playing well. Not terrible. Or not great, but not terrible. They're 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 playing well. Everything will come cra- crashing back down to reality. Coming back down to reality. So, guys, I got to ask the question to you guys out there in the comments in the comments below: Are the Washington Commanders contenders or pretenders? John says Washingtons are contenders. The Commanders are contenders, says John. John says sad. Rand says contender, but got but they're going to get worked this weekend. So, John, let me ask you this question. They do play the Ravens this weekend, and I have been on this show right here and said that the Ravens have the best team on paper in the NFL, and and they are probably the best team right now in the NFL. If you get dick-stomped by the Baltimore Ravens this week, 
but then come back the following weeks and beat the Panthers and Bears and Giants again. So you have won seven out of your eight, and then uh, eight eight out of your first 10, 10, 10 games versus teams that are really like nobodies, right? And the two teams that are playoff teams, you got your dick stonked by. Does that really make you a contender? I don't know. I'm being. I'm. I'm, I'm just. I'm, I'm just trying to be devil's advocate here because I think they are contend or pretenders. Kevin Cummings says contenders. They came out of nowhere for you. Maybe I said it since preseason. They're going to win that division. And Kevin, you've been spot on. You have been watching this show now for a, a month or so or so now. And every time we've talked about the Washington Commanders, you have been on this. They're, they're going to win the division. They're going to win the division. They're going to win the division. Now, let's say the Cowboys, we're, we are going to be talking about the Dallas Cowboys coming up here soon, so stay tuned. But let's say the Cowboys are a 7-win team. Let's say the Eagles are a 6-win team. Let's say the Giants are a 5-win team, and you win that division by, by default, but you have a losing record, 8-9. to nine. Does that really make you a contender still? I mean, yes, you are going to the playoffs. Yes, you're probably going to get blown out in the playoffs, but you had a losing record. Does that make you, does that really make you a contender? Like when I think of contender, I think of deep playoff run. I don't know. Paul Aker must be a Cowboys hater says who has Dallas beaten. They got very lucky to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. Paul, we will be talking about the Dallas Cowboys coming up here. Stay tuned, man. Stay, stay tuned. But the Dallas Cowboys dominated the Steelers. Let's just be honest. Kevin says, it doesn't matter how you win the game as long as you win. Win them, baby. Just And John People says, just like Al, Al Davis says, just win, baby, win. Yes. It doesn't matter if you win by win or a hundred. A win is a win is a win. And I respect you guys for that. I get it. I get it. James Shaman says, a little bit of both. They are good, but they really haven't been under the bright lights yet. Facts. Facts. James is bringing the truth today, bringing the facts today. We have been hyping up. I mean, hell, I I have them uh, six in my power in my power rankings, right? We've been hyping them up, but Browns, Cardinals, Bengals, Giants, nah, eh. Giants could be sleepers, seven, eight wins potentially. It could be a good win, but the Bengals, Cardinals, and Browns right now are not. They are bad, bad bad teams. Paul says a typical Dallas fan reply. <laughs> True. I guess so. Top can top fan. Kevin says Ravens are more experienced and have a better team plain and simple. Washington is still winning the division. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Kevin says, if you make the playoffs then you are a contender, I mean, Obviously, you have to be one of the top 14 teams in the NFL to make the playoffs. Obviously, you have to either win the division or be a really, really good team to make the playoffs. So I, I guess by default, Kevin, whoever makes it into the playoffs, I think this year is going to be a contender, yes. So if the Washington Commanders do make it to the playoffs and win the NFC East like you expect, I think you by default you have to make them a contender because this year it is truly wide open. Truly wide open. And Paul says dominated. Yes, the Dallas Cowboys dominated the Steelers. <laughs> yes. Yes. Ryan says, when I think of contender, I think of Mickey from Rocky. You know, fun, fun fact here, guys. I have never watched Rocky. Never watched Rocky, never watched any of the Star Wars. And like, am I a loser for that? <laughs> Kevin says, ask the Eagles how they think how how it how they think a team with a losing record aren't contenders in the playoffs. Cough, 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 Buccaneers. True. I mean, it is this is what's great about the the NFL in general. Any given Sunday, a team can win. Look at the Giants from Eli Manning's second Super Bowl, right? They had a win week 17 to just get into the playoffs. They were the last seed of the of of the of the the playoffs 
and then they went on some amazing run. So, yeah. 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 Oh, Kevin says, you have never watched Rocky? Hand over your man card, LMAO. <laughs> yeah. Never seen Rocky? Mean. I've seen, like, parts of it, I think, but I've never really sat down and be like, let me watch Rocky. Like James says, let me watch Rocky one through four and then just stop. No, I've never watched any Rocky. To be honest, the only boxing movie that I've watched is Southpaw. Like, isn't isn't that um isn't that the movie where the dude's wife gets killed or and he's like fighting for his life or something? I think that's what it is. I can't remember. How's that foot taste, Buck? All right, I guess. It it tastes good. You know what, John? I have never been able to put my foot in my mouth. Just, just not that flexible. Not like you Detroit people that get ribs out and just, you know, try to pleasure yourselves. <laughs> if you know, you know. You know, you know. Kevin says, Digstown is another good boxing movie. Maybe, maybe tonight, maybe tonight, after our senior night, after our final uh uh, high school game, home game, I should should say. Basically, maybe we'll uh, we'll get it. Rocky is a quintessential man viewing. Basically, it's a love story. <laughs> Ryan says Diggs Town is great. Okay, top fourteen contenders in a playoff bracket. Damn! Listen, to this guy on Detroit again. Listen, Detroit people are weird. I'm just going to be honest. I work with Detroit people. Y'all are freaking weird, man. Y'all are weird. Y'all get ribs out so you can like be more flexible and take care of business while you're eating this like hot dog that has like a bunch of crap on it that you want to be like Chicago so freaking bad that you're putting like, I don't know, like corn syrup and some other. It's, it's, people are just weird, man. People, people in Detroit are weird. Let's just be honest. Let's just be honest. <laughs> I digress. I digress. Next up on contenders or pretenders, we have the Chicago Bears. The Chicago Bears, right? The Chicago Bears right now are sitting on three and two on the year with two wins in a row. That's right, two in a row. They win one more. It's called a winning streak. It has happened before. If you know, you know. They do play the Jacksonville, this Jacksonville Jaguars this weekend over the pond, which they got their first win of the season last week versus the Indianapolis Colts. The Chicago Bears right now offense is ranked 26th in the NFL, averaging 22 points per game and just 287 yards per game. However, however, defense is ranked 7th in the NFL, giving up just 17 points games and 294 yards per game. When you look at the wins for the Chicago Bears, they beat the Tennessee Titans. They beat the LA Rams. They beat the Carolina Panthers. Combined winning percentage of three wins. Titans are one and three on the season. Rams are one and four on the season. Panthers are one and four on the season. Now, they did battle against the Houston Texans in Houston week number two. You take away the 17 sacks and the 15 hits on the quarterback. They may have won that game. They also lost to the Indianapolis Colts, a pretty decent Indianapolis Colts Colts team. So when we look at the three and two Chicago Bears winning two games in a row, guys, are they contenders or are they pretenders? Guys, the Chicago Bears are pretenders. The Chicago Bears are just not a very good, well-rounded team. They have a lot of good parts. Their defense obviously ranked seventh, pretty good defense. DJ Moore, right, and Keenan Allen, and Rome, a pretty good receiving core. DeAndre Swift, decent running back. Caleb Williams, not a terrible quarterback, has room to grow. He's still a rookie, right, still still, still growing, still improving, and somehow that offensive, rank, that offensive line is ranked 10th per PFF. No, the, the, the Chicago Bears have one of the worst offensive lines in the NFL. And that is why they are pretenders because their offensive line is terrible. Coaching, offensive coordinator, head coach cannot figure out how to make this offensive line decent. They they need to realize that they need to roll the pocket or 
do they need to do something. They need to stop what they're doing because their offense is terrible. Offensive line is terrible. And the play calling has been suspect at best. Now, they do play the Jaguars this weekend. They will probably beat the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jaguars are a complete dumpster fire. Let's just be flat and honest. But then they play the Commanders, the Cardinals, the Patriots, Packers, and Vikings, and Lions in, in the upcoming weeks. Guys, it could be very easy that they can win three in a row, but then they could lose five, six, eight, nine games in a row. They aren't going to beat the Commanders. They aren't going to beat the uh, the Cardinals. The Patriots might come into Soldier Field and wax that ass with freaking Drake May. Packers, Vikings, Lions, 49ers, Vikings, Lions, Seahawks, Packers. N no. Guys, the Bears are not good. The Bears are not good. Let me say it one more time for all you Bears fans out there. The Chicago Bears are not good. Their wins this season versus the Tennessee Titans. If Will Levis doesn't do some underhanded crap interception pick six, the Bears lose that game. If the Rams have one more healthy player on the offensive side of the, like, of the ball, the Bears lose that game. If the Panthers just were not the Panthers, they would have probably lost that game. The only win of the, uh, of the season, I say, yeah, you, you guys definitely won that game, was the Carolina Panthers game. And at the same time, it's the Carolina Panthers. The, the, the Panthers, they're terrible. Now, with that being said, the Bears have shown signs of greatness. The Bears have shown signs that they can put a drive together the Divas can shut down a team and be dominant, but they have yet to do it a full game. Hell, they've yet to do it a full quarter. Once they put in a full half of foot football, then let's worry about building up into a whole game, and then let's put two, three, four games in a row, playing complete football games. Then I could potentially call the Chicago Bears contenders. They have all the right pieces. The Chicago Bears have finally put a team on the field worth getting excited about. They have their quarterback. They have receiver core. They have a defense. The only thing they're really missing, honestly, is a freaking offensive coordinator and a coach that doesn't suck. Matt Everflew should have been fired last season. Guys, there is no way that I can ever put contenders in Chicago Bears in the same sentence. Although I just did. But in the comments below, guys, are the Chicago Bears contenders or pretenders? Matt Henry. Matt Henry, our resident Chicago Bears fan in the chat, says the Bears are contenders. Bear down, baby. What up, dope? You want you want you want you want my phone? All right, here you go, buddy. Go have fun. Matt Henry says, contenders, bear down. James Shamler says, pretenders, pretenders. The Jags are going to prove it this weekend. So not only James is saying the Chicago Bears are pretenders, he's saying the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to wax that ass. Bring that ass here, boy. Pew, pew. <laughs> John says the Bears are pretenders as well. And John knows all about pre pretenders because he is a Detroit Lions and Las Vegas fan. So he knows what a pretender looks like. Ryan says the Chicago Bears are pretenders as well. John, or sorry, Matt, the defend your boys. Everybody is saying pretenders. Matt, come on. Defend your boys. Defend your boys. Kevin says pretenders. No way they're making it into the playoffs, but I expect them to have a good game this weekend. John says pretenders. They still are, they're still only winning six or seven games, maybe. James Shamus says the Houston Texans were looking past the Bears. Potentially. Potentially. 
I mean, it was the second week of the season. Uh, James Drew or Pra, I'll be right. John says, Caleb is running for his life with that poo-poo old line. On the offensive line defense, John. Let me try to defend that offensive line a, like a little bit. Caleb Williams is holding on the, to the ball a little bit longer than most of the NFL quarterbacks. I believe I looked it up, and it, and uh, he was the 30th or 31st uh, ranked quarterback to from snart from a snap to passing of the ball of, of hanging on to the ball. It's right around four or five s- seconds. So he definitely hangs on to the ball a long time, but the offensive line is, is not very good. Play calling doesn't help either. When you have a bad offensive line and a quarterback that hangs on to the ball too long, how do you fix that? Quick slants, quick quick passing game. Do not push the ball down on the field. Get DJ Moore on a couple b- b- bubble screens. Have Keenan Allen run an out route or a slant. You know, just quick, 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 quick passing game. Nickel and diamond down the field. Plain, Plain Shark says, I think the Bears are overrated. I wouldn't say overrated. I would say overhyped. I think the Chicago Bears are overhyped this season. There, there's been a lot of hype, a lot of buzz around Kayla Williams and the Chicago Bears pretty much all season long. So uh, overrated, eh. overhyped, yes. Overhyped, yes. David Nazar's in the chat. Chargers fan just showed up. He says that the Jets hired Belichick. No, they did not. Excuse me. They uh, promoted their defensive coordinator to... Um, um, head coach John says are you sitting on one on are you sitting on one of those ribs why would I be taking a rib <laughs> John why would you give me your ribs to sit on like that, that's just weird that's just weird Matt says orgy for Heisman I had not following college f- football very very closely unfortunately Matt um it just it is what it is uh Plain Shark says the Bears remind me of the Jets. The Jets are the worst organization in all of NFL. The Bears are starting to improve themselves. Now, as much as I dog the Bears, Matt, Combsy, Fitz, you Chicago Bears fans, I can enjoy, I can appreciate them building the team like they're building, right? They are putting all the right pieces in place. Ryan Poles is doing a great job. He got the quarterback that he wanted. He got running back. He's got receivers. They got a defense, right? They traded for uh, defensive players midseason last year. The one thing that the Bears are lacking is a coach, to be honest. Matt Everflus is not it. Now, I know there's been people out there, Brandon Combs, Matt Everflus for coach of the year if they make it to the playoffs. Ugh, no. No. The Chicago Bears can only win despite of Matt Everflus, not because of Matt Ever, not Everflus. Kevin says, no, Bill Belichick says, no attention of coaching this season. And John says, he's chasing those hoes. You are right. You are right. Um, Kevin Cummings says, Bear fans actually exist? Yeah. There's couple here matt's a uh bears fan combsy is a bears as a bears fan and fitz is a bears fan that's pretty much all the bear fans that i know <laughs> uh john says jags win in london every time if i'm not mistaken I mean this is not london this is overseas in general the jaguars are six and five last year they did win back-to-back games over the pond of course they played in london and then was it germany last year i'm not for sure i don't know Ryan says, I know a few Bears Bears fans. <laughs> uh, Planet Shark says, Bears, Jets, Jaguars, Panthers are all bad this season. The Bears are not bad. They're just not there yet. They are pretenders. They're not, they're not contenders. Jets, Jaguars, Panthers, meh. We're going to be talking about the Jets coming up here. So stay tuned for that. We'll be talking about the Jets. Kevin says, rookies do tend to hold on the ball longer than necessary. Williams will get better unlike unless Chick, Chick, Chicago ruins him like they have done every other quarterback they have drafted. Kevin, you are spot on. Rookie quarterbacks do 
especially the ones that have not played, you know, at a strictly pro level versus elite competition week after week after week. That just doesn't exist any like like anymore. But from every coach, every player, everything that I viewed from college into the NFL is NFL quarterbacks throw receivers open. You are not going to get that two, three, four window wide openness, right? You have to throw your guy guy open. You are going to get one yard, and you're going to be happy with that one yard. In college, you do get those wide open plays. You 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 do get the four, five, six yards of separation. And when you watch Caleb Williams tape, USC, right? Consistently, guys were running wide open. It's just when you're playing. NFL players on on your team versus college players, you are going to be better. You're going to be more athletic. Like more athletic, you're going to be gifted. In the NFL, everybody's an NFL player. Everybody has that gift. Everybody has that talent. So it just it, it, it is taking him time to get adjusted. Right, keeping him adjusted. Matt Henry says the Lions and Bears are the most miserable franchises in the NFL history. Not wrong. Matt Henry says Everflux graduated from the same high school as me. Okay, there's a connection. I didn't even know Matt Everflux went, went to high school. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. John says they are not going to come close between the Lions, Vikings, and Packers. You'll, you'll see it too. Matt Henry says, thank you, Kansas State, for Will Howard, Buckeye Nation. Yeah, still still pretty bitter about my man Will Howard going to the, the Ohio State, but I have a couple former high school kids that are at Ohio State, and they love them some Will, some Will Howard. Will Howard loves that million-dollar NIL deal. And to be honest, Kansas State's pretty good with Avery Johnson and his like, like, like as well. That's about extent as my college football knowledge goes. It's not really outside outside of Ohio State or the Kansas State. But Bears are pretenders. Next up, Seattle Seahawks. Seattle Seahawks. The Seattle Seahawks were the talk of the town. First three weeks of of the season. First three weeks of the the season, three, three, and oh, we are talking about them winning the NFC West, not me, but people in general, making a deep playoff run, making a Super Bowl run. But since then, people are like, slow it down, baby, and they've lost three games in a row. The Seahawks defense right now is ranked first if the ranking started at 18th. The Seattle Seahawks the def- the defense guys is ranked 18th, giving up 25 points per game, 340 yards per game. The offense, on the other hand, is ranked seventh. But only averaging 20 points per game, but they're giving up, they're averaging 373 yards per game as well. Wins this season on the surface week one, like, oh, the Broncos, but the Broncos are since then are three and two. They do have the wins over, over the Patriots and the Miami Dolphins as well. Their losses, they got manhandled by the Detroit Lions, 42 to 29. They got beat by the Giants when they were actually going for a go-ahead field goal. That field goal ultimately got blocked, and the Giants went ahead to seal the deal. And, of course, the 49ers, they lost on Thursday night, 36-24, when they attempted a comeback, but Geno Smith basically threw a, a interception to basically cost them the game. So the Seahawks now, guys, are 3-3 three and three on the season. Started off 3-3-0, three, three and oh, lost three games in a row now. So, guys, are the Seahawks contenders or pretenders? And if there's a pretender out there, it is going to be the Seattle Seahawks, guys. They are pretenders. In the next weeks coming forward, they do play the Falcons, the Bills, the 49ers. They play the Cardinals twice. They play the Packers. They play the Vikings to end the season. That could easily be seven more losses on the season. And let's not forget that they still play the LA Rams twice this season. The Rams are starting to get healthy. They will be healthy when they do play the Seattle Seahawks in a few, I think it's four weeks and seven weeks when, as when they play the Rams. I'm tired of the injuries excuse. Oh, we're missing all these defensive injuries. We're missing all these offensive injuries, whatever, yada, yada, yada. Every team in the NFL has injuries. It is always the next man up. The Dallas Cowboys have are missing five defensive starters. 
They are winning. The San Francisco 49ers, down to their four-string running back, they are winning. Injuries is no longer an excuse. The real issue in Seattle is they are being out-coached. They are being out-prepared. They're being out-coached. I'm not saying Mike McDonald is a bad coach, but he is preparing bad. He is he is putting those the team in bad situations. When it's nut crutch time, he shits the bed. Sounds like a Baltimore thing, right? I said I said what I said. I said said what I said. But I think the Seattle Seahawks are pretenders. The three and zero start was just fool's gold. It was a facade. It was smoke and mirrors. The real Seattle Seahawks are showing up. When it's not crunch time, they shit the bed. It is a NFC West MO. It is a Baltimore Ravens MO. And guess what? Former defensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens is now the Seahawks head, like, like head coach, and the Seahawks are in the NFC West. It is just the MO. They are pretenders. If you guys think otherwise, let me know in the comments. So are they contenders or are they pretenders? Matt Henry says Geno Smith is who he thought he was, and that's not a good quarterback. And, Matt, I want to double down on that a little bit. Now, not, not double down, but, but, but kind of challenge you, right? Geno Smith has 1,800 yards passing so far this NFL season. That is first for the NFL. Now, he does have six interceptions to six touchdowns. I would like that interception rate to go down and the touchdown rate to go up, but Geno Smith is really not costing them games. Yes, last night he potentially did cost them the game by throwing, the, I think it was two interceptions, two very costly interceptions, but they're just simply being out-prepared, out-coached. I, th I mean, Geno Smith is a good quarterback. He's like, he's not elite. He's not top 10. He's right smack in the middle, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. He is right there. He is a good franchise quarterback that's going to win you a lot of games. Maybe not ever, may, maybe not ever win you the big game, but he's going to consistently be eight, nine, 10 wins year after year, after year after year. John says the Seahawks are pretenders. Pretenders. After that Detroit game, guys, I, I, I think everybody was 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 on me hard. Oh, or sorry, before the uh, the Detroit game, people were on me hard. Oh, the Seahawks are so good. They're this, this, and this, and this. And then they got beat down by the Lions. Oh, it was because of injuries and all this. Stop it. Stop it. They are pretenders. They are pretenders. And Kevin says, inconsistency is a contender. Seahawks are very inconsistent. Exactly right. Exactly right. Matt Henry says they are pretenders as well. It's not working. You're welcome, buddy. Little man still on fall break. Next week they go back. Thank God. <laughs> James says they're missing Pete Carroll on the sideline. I, they are missing fundamentals, right? Like, so. As a head coach myself, right? As a coach myself in in general, you do not know how you're going to react in nut crunch situations. When it's fourth quarter, when it's fourth and three, you are down by two. Do you go for the field goal or do you go for go for go for for the win? Sitting on a couch, sitting behind a computer screen, sitting on your phone, it's easy to make that call. Oh, I'll do this, this, and this. But, but until you put yourself in those situations, you don't know what you're going to do. The fact of the matter is Mike McDaniel is only 37 years years old. Same age as me. We are both the same age. We, we, we could potentially be cut from the same cloth. But he has zero head coaching experience. I think this is his first year of head coaching versus my 10 years of head coaching experience, right? I'm not saying I'm a better head coach than like he is. But I'm not going to panic in said situations. I'm not going to sh shit the bed in said situations. I'm, I'm going to be calm and calm and collective and think things through. Go with the gut. Maybe that's what he needs to do. Maybe that's what he needs to do. John says they are pretenders. 
They have a hard schedule. They do have a hard schedule. They do have a hard schedule. I mean, you play the Packers and Vikings, two of the best teams in the NFC. You still play the 49ers again. The Cardinals might be a sneaky, good, 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 good team. And the Rams, if it wasn't for all of their injuries, I know it's not an excuse, but they wouldn't be one and four. One and four. Kevin says the Seahawks are severely overrated. They are. They are. Kevin also says the Bills are missing a shit ton of players due to due to injury too. You don't hear me crying about it. Next man up. Exactly. It's a gosh darn major league, boys. <laughs> Sorry, I watched major major league earlier today. Seahawks need an NBA team besides, but that's besides the point. The Seahawks are pretenders. I would love me to see a Seattle see a, uh, Supersonics again. Best team ever. Planet Shark says the Seahawks remind me of the Dallas Cowboys. What can go wrong will go wrong. I believe that is called a, uh, is it apochondriac? Right? I had a friend, his name was Andre. We used to play paintball together. We were on a Division Three team. And uh, we were at the hotel just chilling before be, be, uh, be, be a four events. Nothing to, nothing to, nothing to worry about. And then Andre would just start freaking out. Uh, 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 uh. Like he he was always worrying about something. And if there was nothing to worry about, he would he he, he would be worrying because there's nothing because there's nothing to worry about. And I think that's what the Seahawks are doing right now. Gino has SN Oh, Jackson Smith, Najigba, DK Metcalf, and Walk and and Walker. Those are some great weapons, and he still can't get it done. Overthrows and just bad passes. He does have some of those, though, but still ranked seventh in the NFL. With all those weapons, they're still ranked seventh in the NFL. By the way, Tyler Lockett from the Kansas State University is still a dog. Still a dog. Matt says, when it's, when it's, gut, ch- when it's gut chuck time, Geno doesn't have it. Geno also hasn't been in many of those opportunities either, like, like either, right? Just doesn't have no stink. Don't forget about Noah. No, Noah, a fan. He's a good tight end paired up with a bad quarterback play. There's a reason why the Denver Broncos gotten rid of Noah fan. Just, 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 just put it out there. So Seattle Seahawks guys, are they contenders or pretenders? Next up on the contenders or pretenders week NFL six edition, a team that has been in headlines all week. Fired their head coach, promoted their defensive coordinator to uh, uh, intern head coach or interim head coach, demoted Nathaniel Hackett, and we're still talking about potentially them being a contender in the NFL. And that is one only the New York Football Jets. Right now, the Jets are sitting at two and three on this season with a date on Monday with the Buffalo Bills. If slash win. The New York Jets win this game on my night football versus the Buffalo Bills. They will be sitting atop of the AFC East. Like I said earlier, the the Jets did fire their head coach this week in Robert Sala and demoted Nathaniel Hackett from offensive coordinator. Now, the Jets do have back-to-back wins in this season over the Titans and Patriots come week two and week three. But since then, they have lost two games in like in a row. To the Broncos in a rainy, stormy day, and then they got beat down by the Minnesota Vikings. Both pretty good teams. Let's, let, let, let's just be honest. But the Jets' offense right now is ranked 28th. 28th averages 18 points per game and, and just 286 yards per game, respectively. The defense, however, been holding down the ship. The defense is is, is ranked second in the in the in the NFL, giving up 22 points per game with 243 yards, respectively. So, New York football Jets, guys, are they contenders or are they pretenders? The correct answer that we're going to go with is contenders. They are 157% contenders. Why? Because they got that bad, bad man, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers. Now, they've gone through a little controversy this week. I would have waited till bye week to fire uh, – uh, Robert Sala, or maybe just demote Nathaniel Hackett and see and see how he went. But it is, it is, it is what it is. But 
If they beat the Buffalo Bills on Monday, they're sitting on top of the AFC East, a depleted AFC East. The Buffalo Bills going through their injury phase right now. Josh Allen with a young offensive line, with a young receiving core can only do so much. Now, come last half of the year, I, I expect the Buffalo Bills to be a hell of a lot better and still win the East. But the Dolphins, they're done. The Patriots, they're done. But if the Jets do beat the Bills on Bills on Monday, they have the Steelers, Patriots, and, and like in Texans coming up. They could potentially win four games in like in, in a row. And if they get hot and stay hot, anything is possible with Aaron Rodgers, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all of all time. So, guys, I think the Jets are contenders. I think they're mainly contenders because the AFC East is so weak. I'm going to pull a logic out of Kevin Cummings' chat here. Earlier, Kevin said that the Washington Commanders are contenders because they're going to make the playoffs. I don't care if they're losing. I don't care or whatever. They're, they're, they're going to win the East, and they're going to be a playoff-bound team. And I think the Jets could potentially pull something out of their ASs and win the ASC East. So, guys, let me know in the comments below. Are the Jets contenders or pretenders? Matt Henry says, J-E-T-S, contenders, contenders, contenders. Matt is saying contenders. And Kevin says the Jets are a joke. John says the Jets are pretenders. John is saying that they're contenders, still a top defense and an offense once they start to click. This is the problem that I have with the Jets, though, right? They're all pro... Best receiver in the NFL, Garrett Wilson. He had all the potential in the world this season. We thought he was going to take off and go to the moon, baby. But he has digressed. He has digressed. Garrett Wilson has definitely taken some steps some steps back. Now, if Garrett Wilson just starts to get on the same page with Aaron Rodgers and they start smoking the doobies again, bada bing, bada boom, it could, it could start to click. They could start to click and have a great season. So I think they're uh, contenders. Kevin says, historically speaking, the teams who fire their head coach usually win the game after. There we go. You're all done. All right, buddy. I love you. Ryan says, so far, it's a it's, it's been pretender heavy. So I'll add to that pile and say the Jets are pretenders. And Kevin says, historically speaking, the, the team that says at, once they fire the head coach the, the, the week after, they normally win that game. Also, Kevin and Ryan, historically speaking, usually teams fire their head coach on bye weeks, not in the middle of the week, not a Wednesday. So we'll, we'll talk about that. Kevin says, Jets are more overrated than the Seahawks. Overhyped for sure. 100% they are, they, they, they are overhyped. People had them going to the playoffs and Super Bowl. I still think they're the contenders. John says it's it's it though. They go to the rest of the season on the L on the L wagon. Lose the rest of the season. Okay. Damn. This week, they have been in complete turmoil since the offseason. <laughs> Not wrong. Ever since Aaron Rodgers went to Egypt during mandatory training camp. I kind of felt the Jets were going to have a bad season. Now, I did say that the Jets were going to finish 7-10 and 10 again this season, like the third season, like, like in a row. I did say the Jets were going to have a bad season. But that doesn't mean they're going to be a winning team still, even though I say they're contenders. I'm taking a playbook out of Kevin. I think they're a playoff team. I think they could potentially could win the AFC East still. And that, by default, makes them con. con contenders and kevin says there's there's that there, there's them ifs again i believe wayne g said at bets if if thems and butts had what's and cuts and i don't i don't remember <laughs> matt says i gotta run have a fantastic rest of your day bear down buckeye nation matt thank you for joining us man but guys the jets are they contenders or are they pretenders let us know in the comments below now what y'all came here for 
What y'all came here for is talk about the Dallas Cowboys. Let's just be honest. I put the Dallas Cowboys in the title segment and everybody come flocking in. Talking about the Dallas Cowboys. Even though we were talking about five other teams, they're talking about Dallas Cowboys, Dallas Cowboys, Dallas Cowboys. That's why they're America's team. But let's talk about the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys do welcome the Detroit Lions into town this weekend. Fresh off the win on Sunday Night Football over the Pittsburgh Steelers in a dominating fashion. That's right. They dominated the Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's just be honest. They have now won two games in a row with with wins over the Giants and the Pittsburgh Steelers. But before that, they did have back-to-back losses to, to the Saints, which they got dominated, and to the Ravens when they got dominated for three quarters. Come back in the fourth quarter to make it somewhat a respectable game, but they got dominated as well. Both of those teams are pretty, pretty good, meaning the Saints and the Ravens. Right now, the Dallas Cowboys defense is ranked 14th in the NFL. But I think the Dallas Cowboys defense is better without Micah Parsons. They have better run stoppage. They have better blitz blitz, bl- blitz packages, and they're more well-rounded, too, we'll be honest. So I expect their ranking to go up at week after week after week. The offense, ranked, the offense right now is ranked 12th, scoring 24 points per game with 353 yards res- respectively. So the 3-2 and two Dallas Cowboys do welcome the Detroit Lions into town. This is a true-telling game for both teams. So we got to ask the question, are the Dallas Cowboys contenders or are they pretenders? Guys, the Dallas Cowboys are contenders. The Dallas Cowboys are key contenders. Let, us say, let me say it one more time for the people in the back. They are contenders. They stopped the rushing game last week versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's been the biggest Achilles heel for them all season long. Stop the run, stop the run, stop the run. They did it last week for the Pittsburgh Steelers without Micah Parsons and without four other starters on that defense. Now, this is a proven week for them. This is a proven week for them versus the Dallas, versus, versus versus the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions are a tough team. They do have one of the best one-two running back combos in the NFL. They do have a top five quarterback as like as well in Jared Goff. It is going to be a tough test. And if you look at the schedule for the Dallas Cowboys moving to, moving forward, we talked about the Seahawks schedule being tough. The Dallas Cowboys schedule is tough. They do play the Detroit Lions. Really, really good team. They play the San Francisco 49ers, starting to get their mojo back. They do play the Falcons. Eagles potentially could be a good game, could be a two a, a, a good team. This week is telling for the Philadelphia Eagles, and then they play the Texans and the and the Commanders. I think if they win three out of the, three out of their next six, they will get that mojo, they will get that swag, and they'll get hot. Then you add Devontae Adams, you bring in Nick Chubb as well from the Cleveland Browns. Bada bing, bada boom, they are going to get hot. They're going to take off in the last quarter of the season and in, 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 into the playoffs. They're going to be unstoppable. Guys, the Dallas Cowboys are contenders. They've shown it that they have the ability to win a lot of football games. Now, the Divas has been a little sus, the two losses versus the Saints and then like in the Ravens, but they played well versus the Giants team, a Giants team that we might be sleeping on a little bit. They played really well. They dominated the Pittsburgh Steelers, a playoff-bound Pittsburgh Steelers team, I might add. Going to win that North. But this week is telling for for them, and they are contenders. They are a 100% contenders on the Dallas Cowboys. So, guys, in the comments below, are the Dallas Cowboys contenders or pretenders? John says the Dallas Cowboys are by tender. So they're both contenders and pretenders. Okay. Um, elaborate on that, John. Elaborate. John says the Dallas the Dallas Cowgirls get them out of here. Get them out of here. That was my best bo- uh, best Boston accent I can get. John says the Lions are getting that ass this weekend. John says the Lions dominate them in, in their own home. John's being a Lions fan that he is. So the Detroit Lions are going to report eligible. Once they get on the plane, when they come down to Dallas, Skipper's going to be like, hey, I'm eligible. 
all game. He's like, I'm eligible. I'm eligible. I'm eligible. And they're going to dominate that ass. Kevin Cummings says they have no running game. The Dallas Cowboys are pretenders. Kevin, I would agree with you, but Zeke came out today, and I posted it here on Facebook.com forward slash man hour and also on our Discord that Zeke Elliott wants the ball. He wants the ball more. He's ready to prove that he is worth his weight in gold. He is ready to carry this team into the promised land. You give this ball to Zeke some more, bada bing, bada boom. But I think the Dallas Cowboys are going to surprise us. I think the Dallas Cowboys are, are going to go out there and they're going to trade for a running back. Whether it be somebody like Nick Chubb. May, it might be with the Kansas City Chiefs and get Clyde's Edward Hilaire. The Kansas City Chiefs have potentially three starting run, running, running backs on their roster with IJ Pacheco, Kareem Hunt, and CEH, and also got Carson Steele. The Dallas Cowboys are like, hey, Chiefs, what do you want for uh, Clyde Edward Hilaire? We know he's been on, he's been on your IR for some mental for some mental health issues, some PTSD. But hey, what do you want for him? Cowboys are going to make make a play in the running gap room. John says the Lions do report, but then he comes out and says the contenders still hate me. These Cowboys. So John's saying, I hate the Dallas Cowboys. I hate everything about them. They cheated, but they're still contenders. True. Kevin says, speaking for my Lions friend, Bristella, Lions going to stomp that ass, boy. <laughs> uh, Dallas has also shown how they can lose a shit ton of games, too. They have. The Dallas Cowboys have shown you how they can go lose, but they've also shown you how they can win as well. And Kevin says, I don't give a F what Zeke says. He's past his prime. He's not even top 15 running back in the league. You're right. He's number two on his team, if not number three. That's why they're trading for a for a running back. John says they can't stop the run, the, the, the Lions running backs. They're going to have 200 yards on the ground. And I beg to differ. I think it's going to be a shootout this weekend. I think this weekend between the Dallas Cowboys and the, like, and the, like, and the Detroit Lions are going to be much like the uh, Ravens and Bengals last last week. 38, 20, 25. The person who has the ball last is probably going to win this game. Going to win this game. So I got, I don't care if the Lions have 200 yards on the like, 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 like on the grounder. Each back has 200 yards, like John says. The Dallas Cowboys are contenders, baby. They're contenders. So, guys, in the comments below, are they contenders or are they pretenders? All right, guys, so that is going to be it for Man Hour today, guys. It is senior night here in beautiful southern Indiana. Last home game of the regular season playoffs start the following week. Starts Tuesday, actually. Starts Tuesday. John says 34-17 Detroit. Get out of here. We'll be talking about each NFL game tomorrow. All 11 Sunday NFL games tomorrow night right here on the uh, Facebook.com. Of course, YouTube.com. Break down all 11 games happening on Sunday. Give you three keys. Myself and Hoffy will be on here talking some shit. Hope you guys can join us tomorrow, 9 p.m. East Coast time. Until then, take care. Rest up, man, our nation, because we've got a big football day ahead of us. Starts at 9 o'clock here on the East Coast. It ends at midnight, potentially. Potentially. But until then, guys, we are out. Have a great weekend. See you Monday.